I'm a livestock buyer. I see hoof cattle go through here every day. Think how many steaks they'd make. And some of them will make better steaks than others. Some steaks are tender, others tough. It could be the cooking, but more than likely the difference is in quality. One was better than the other even before it was cooked. I'll tell you why. In the cattle business, I take trips out west. It seems to me that the west is as glamorous now as it was in the old days. Here's where a lot of our beef cattle are bred and raised. Why shouldn't they be raised out here? Their basic feed requirement is roughage, which they can get from pasture, and there's acres and acres of that in the wide open prairies. Oh, there's a little more fence, and some of the buildings are painted today, but the ranchers and cow hands still live miles back from the road and spend hours riding horseback over the range tending their herds. Ranchers usually graze their calves until they are 6 to 18 months old, depending on the market and the quality of their pasture. Every fall, the rancher and his cowboys round up the herds. After he gets them in from the hills and valleys, he sorts out the calves and yearlings that he wants to sell. Cowhands used to spend months driving these critters across rough country to the railhead But today it's different. These calves have been on pasture long enough. It's time they were brought into the great corn belt for fattening. Some western ranchers sell to buyers who come to the ranch. Others sell at auctions. Some through feeder cattle dealers. Many go to the central markets. Today, each rancher has his own loading corral where the young bellering calves can be loaded into a semi. eastward across Nebraska and the Dakotas, in late summer or early fall, the big move is on. From Texas, Wyoming, and Montana they come. By trucks and trains, the feeder cattle start moving into the stockyards at Omaha, New City, Kansas City, and St. Joe. Hundreds of cattle go through here every day. I think of this as the crossroads of quality. For some of the cattle, it's the end of the line. First thing you know, there are stakes. 
What kind of stakes will they make? The crossroads of quality. That's why the beef producer is here at the stockyards to buy grass-fed western cattle. He's quite a guy. He'll fatten them with a high protein and corn ration and turn them into tender, high-quality beef. He has the nerve and courage to invest many thousands of dollars in these western cattle. He has to be willing to feed them his entire corn crop and has to gamble on rate of gain, disease, feed costs, and market fluctuations. He has to put in a lot of downright hard work to give you a really tender steak. Not all of the cattle are headed for slaughter now. There are trucks filled with calves and yearlings being hauled away from the stockyards. They're going to feedlots in the corn belt. These are the ones that will later end up as the most tender steaks. Yes, some steaks are better than others. The really good ones come from a corn belt feedlot. So each fall, thousands of calves and yearlings are brought to the feedlots. The beef producer is quite a guy. He has to buy them right, feed them right, and sell them right. And the corn is there waiting for them. When the feeder first gets them, they have to make an adjustment to their new location. He feeds them roughage and a small amount of grain. After a few days, he begins to increase the amount of corn. Before long, they are on a full feed of corn with a limited amount of roughage and supplement. This is beef production. It's a bigger business than most people think. For example, Iowa, think of as a corn state, ranks seventh as a beef raising state, but ranks first in pounds of beef marketed. Instead of selling his corn for cash, this cattle feeder is turning it into high quality beef.